Thanks, yeah. It's, it's, it's a rich owner. Yeah. Good Hello. to see you. Yeah. We're a big legend of the new wave of British heavy metal. Due to play with <laughs> Wildfire, Straight Super, uh -huh. and with the UK. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's absolutely right, yeah. 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 I think it's... First of all, tell us Thank you. the history of Recon, please. So the, the story of weapon. Yeah. Story of weapon. Okay. Um, weapon um, first got the name weapon in 1980. Yeah. Um, but the band was playing before, um, as uh, called Fast Relief. Yeah. Uh, Fast Relief was um, me on guitar and two of my school friends. One a bass player um, called Pete Armitage and a drummer called Lindsay Lindsay Broadbridge, and a vocalist um, called Brian Keaton. And in 1979, uh, yeah, the end of 1979, the vocalist left, and I met Danny, Danny Hines, who's now the singer in Weapon UK. And Danny uh, advertised in in the, in the in the newspaper, and I advertised in the newspaper. We came together and met. Um, Danny joined Fast Relief, still called Fast Relief, um, and then we then uh, changed the name to Weapon, and. Within within two months, we changed the bass, the bass player and the drummer. So we, we brought in uh, Bruce Bidland on drums and Baz Downs on bass. And then within, say, another two or three months, we signed uh, a deal with Virgin, Virgin Music Publishing. And then uh, we made some, some demos, songs, Set Stage Alive, Mad Mad World, Liar, lots of songs. Um, and then we were uh, in, we were playing in set in London, uh, a, a, a place called the Music Machine in central London. And at the show was um, Fast Eddie Clark, a guitar player from yeah. Motor yeah. Hits, <laughs> Motorhead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, and Eddie saw the band and asked Lemmy if we could play on the Ace of Spades tour uh, for the support in 1980. And um, so Lemmy said, Lemmy came to see us and he liked the band and invited us to play on that tour. Um, during this tour, we the, the record company released Set, Set the Stage Alight as a single, and the single went to number two in the Sounds Heavy Metal charts and was released worldwide. And um, we did um, just under three months touring with Motorhead, and then came Christmas, and then we, in the following year in 1981, we did our own tour. Um, lots of things happened, <laughs> lots of things, as they do. And um, by the end of 1981, we we split up. The band said no more. So um, and that was you know that was then. That's okay. that's the basic history of that. But now you're here. Now we're here, yeah. <laughs> with new with new with new guys. We've um, we got a new drummer. Um, we got uh, we got we got we got Darren on drums, and we got PJ on bass. Um, first it was fast relief. Then weapon, mm -hmm. then wildfire, and finally stage super, right? Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. How were the eighties in London, especially with the new wave? How were the eighties in London? Uh, right, okay. Well, in in, the, in London, it was that the new wave thing was was late seventies, from say 78, 77, 78, and there were lots of bands playing in the London, you know, clubs like this. Yes. You know, we had the Marquee Club, we had the the Music Machine, um, the venue, um, many many clubs. In, in, in London and pubs, and many many bands were playing uh, at that time, playing hard rock. Just just prior to that, there had been uh, the punk yeah. punk thing. So um, the bands that came out of that came through, listening to the classic rock bands through the punk era, into uh, what became the new wave was um, bands like uh, Nothing Fancy, and uh, they became Thunder, they yeah. renamed Thunder, Samson, um, uh, Iron Maiden. Um, Prey Mantis, Weapon, um, Zero, Zero Metal yeah. Mirror, yeah, all yeah. Those bands. yeah, yeah, many, many, you know, many, many bands, and, and we were playing the same same gigs, yeah. and we all got to know each other, yeah, and um, and then you know some of the bands we, we got signed, uh, Iron Maiden got signed, and some of the bands went on and did very well. Lots of fun, yeah, lots of lots of um, yeah. lots of uh, playing guitar. Lots of um, parties, lots of drinking, lots of girls. <laughs> don't tell, don't tell the wife. <laughs> <laughs> Long time ago, darling. <laughs> Mr. Dave asked to read the new album, Rising from Ashes. Yes. For me, it's very wide because you can find, for example, fountains in paradise. It's very glam, and you can find 
in the case of driving the skies, driving the skies have this very fresh metal. Yes, yes, yes. Well, well, the, 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 there's, there's, there's many types of rock yeah, and metal, yeah. you know, and many types of rock and metal that we like. And um, when, when we did set the stage light in 1980, uh, people said it was the first thrash. Um, but if you listen to the other songs, they weren't thrash. So, it's, so to me, um, rock music is either good or bad. And uh, whether, it's, um, whether it's thrash, whether it's classic, whether it's blues based, whether it's um, you know, black metal, whatever, yeah. um, it's, for me, it's either good or it's bad. So we don't say we'll write in a certain way. We're, we're, we will write what we think is, is good and, and is exciting. So, uh, yeah. so it's interesting for us to, to, to mix some styles. And I find that the block, so good work, is yeah. very similar to Unchained from Van Halen. Is it? Yeah, they find it. Unchained goes down and I keep it down. Jesus! Unchained goes, as that blood soaked rock goes. Yeah, that's similar to the chorus. The chorus? Yeah, it's fine. So, Unchained, don't break break into the wall. Unchained, blood soaked. I don't hear that. You swoon! Get accused of being a bad name, man. Still, could be worse, could yeah. <laughs> Which memories do you keep from Wildfire? And why it was so, so bright? Ah, Wildfire, okay, brilliant, yeah, okay. Um, wildfire was, we had um, Paul Murray O'Day on vocals. From what a singer. Sorry? What a singer. Well, f amazing, amazing, power, yeah. power voice. Um, and we had um, myself and Bruce the drummer from Wildfire, uh, from Weapon. We, we had um, been asked to play with some other bands. One of which was um, to do some demos with Paul, and um, and Paul at the time had been offered a record deal with Mausoleum, um, a Belgian-based rock and metal label. And um, what happened was that um, Mausoleum he, he had two bands, and Paul gave demos to, to Mausoleum, and they chose our songs, the Wildfire songs. So um, so that how, is how it started. And then we went before any gigs. Within two weeks, we went straight to Brussels and recorded "Brute Force and Ignorance," which yeah. was the first album yeah. in 1983. Isn't it? Thank you very much. You I'll give you. I'll give you that five euros later. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yes, it's great. And, and very quick. Came together very quickly that one. And um, and it, it did very well. And then we we went out on tour. We um, <laughs> ran the UK and some shows in in, in Northern Europe. Uh, and then the record company asked us to write another one. So we wrote Summer Lightning. Yeah. And, uh, and we recorded this on the Rolling Stones mobile unit, uh, uh, which many great albums were recorded on, on that one, including Machine Head by Deep Purple, and a couple of Iron Maiden albums as well, I can't remember which one. And, uh, and we recorded Summer Lightning, and then we went on tour with Hawkwind in the UK. Yeah. And then again, we came out and played some shows in, in Europe, various other bits and pieces. Uh, we played some TV shows in the UK, and we played some radio radio shows in Europe, and and a Friday rock show in uh, in the UK with Tommy Tommy Vance and did Friday rock show sessions and this kind of thing, and uh, yeah, great time, really really great time. And what happened is we were playing a television show in the UK with um, Gary Moore and uh, Phil Lynott with a song out out in the fields yeah and they were and we were on the same show and whilst we were on the show Gary Barden from uh, the Michael Schenker group saw the band and approached us to uh, to do stage treatment yeah. well with Bruce Bay and Jeff Brown and Martin Bershaw we created State Trooper thanks to this which memories do you keep from the State Trooper? The State Trooper okay um, all, all, again, all great fun, all great yeah, memories. It, it was a blast to play with Gary Barrett. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we, we, we basically we we signed to um, the same management company called London's Pride Management Company. London's Pride were involved in the organisation of Band Aid. Do you remember Band Aid? No, was eighty four or eighty five? Eighty four. Yeah. Band Aid in eighty four. And um, so what they did is um, they, um, they 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 put us together with Gary and there were some other bands on the bill as well and they put us in the studio to record some tracks and we we originally we wrote four tracks for the original demo um she got the look which was a single Veni Vidi Vinci uh, which is 
probably the classic song yeah. from Spanish yeah. um, Set Fire to the Night, and one more, I can't remember, it's terrible. <laughs> I can't remember. Anyway, and um, so, and from there, they then, you know, got the band a record deal with uh, with FM Revolver, yeah. and um, and we went out on tour with um, Blue Oyster Cult, uh, and, then, and then again came to Europe with our own stuff. And so, yeah, it was cool. And again, lots of radio, uh, Friday Rock Show, and so we did a, we did a, we did a live Parisian session, an acoustic thing, which was, we talked about that, yeah, yeah, level, yeah, which, yeah. Was, which was really, really good. And um, yeah, so yeah, wonderful, wonderful memories and uh, yeah, great stuff. Do you remember your show in Cornelia with Baron Rojo? Very much so, yeah, 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 yeah. That was 1986, I think. 87, I think. It was 87. Some people think that 87, 89. Yeah, it was, definitely wasn't 89, that was too late. It, was, yeah, it would have been, I think 87, I think you're right, 87. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and just, just briefly on that, by this time, um, Martin Bushell had left, and uh, Brian Robertson from Thin Lizzy had uh, joined the band. He did that show. Yeah, he did, yeah, on that show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And what did you have to change the name? Because you are the first weapon. Yeah, yeah, okay, interesting. Well, um, you have to you have to register the name every 25 years. The, the ownership of the name lasts for 25 years. Hey. And, um, okay. sorry mate. Oh, it's 10 years, is it? Sorry, it's only 10 years, it's only 10 years, yeah. Okay, it's 10 years. And um, what happened is, after we split up, many bands around the world liked the name Weapon. Yeah. So they, they took it, and um, one band, one Canadian band, um, so they're a black metal band, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, when we reformed uh, to make a new album, they realised that it was going to be a problem for them, so they registered the name and then and wrote to us with a lawyer, said you can't use your name anymore, which is crazy. Um, so, but they said you can if you add UK to it. So we became Weapon UK, and we we, we like we quite like it. quite good. How, how am I doing? Good. Bueno. Bueno. Muy bueno. Muy bueno. Muy bueno. Why racing from the issues is the first LP from the band. Yeah. Because you have released before the set of satellite compilation. Yeah. Well, 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 interesting enough, the, the, that, 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 that um, set of stage light isn't a compilation. It's actually the original album from 1980, which oh. wasn't released. So, but, but there are some demo tracks on there. So all that stuff that we did back then in 1980 was... Um, was all was going to be out our album, yeah. but it uh, it was never released. So it's finally got released in two thousand and three. <coughs> yeah. So Rising from the Ashes was uh, the first um, um, album released immediately. You know, from once it was yeah. written, and then uh, from there. How were your initial years in the music? How was it? Your initial years. Initial year, early years. Yeah, early years. Yeah. Uh, how were they? Well, how were? Well, easy, hard. Uh, just fun, just fun, yeah, just fun. Always fun, always fun. But the music business is the hardest business in the world. It's a very difficult industry. It's very, very difficult to do anything. So you need a, you need the right people, uh, the right musicians, the right management, the right record company, promoters. Everything has to be just right. And then if you're really lucky, you'll you'll break through big. That is, it's tough. Very few bands break through big. Very few. Yeah. I'm sure you know this, but Hit the Light of Metallica is very similar to Set the Light. Yeah. 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 yeah, very similar. Yeah. Very similar. Yeah. 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 Well, good, a good story because um, in 1983 I was playing uh, a pub with Wildfire in London, and the previous night we, we had been recording the Friday Rock Show on BBC Radio yeah. in, in the UK, and Metallica came in to the show, to the uh, yeah, place, club like this, you know. Yeah. And um, and Metallica's manager at the time, which wasn't, I don't think, Peter Mensch. Peter Mensch managed Metallica, didn't he? Does now. Yeah, it does now, yeah. It was somebody else. He came up and introduced Metallica to us. And um, and we chatted. We'd heard about Metallica. And they'd heard Wildfire on the radio the night before. And they really liked it. And um, so, as we're chatting, um, Lars and James asked Bruce, the drummer, uh, which bands have you played in before? And Bruce said Weapon, and they went, "Wow!" And they're, "We're not worthy." Well, yeah, that is to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, not now, then. <laughs> yeah. 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 Too big. Yeah. 
How it was there too with Motorhead? Oh, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. I mean, you know, we were just very young, and, you know, a bit older than you, but not much. <laughs> and um, and it was, uh, yeah, it was an uh, introduction to uh, wild times. <laughs> wild times, yeah. Not glamorous, wild times. Yeah, yeah. With Lemmy and, and everybody else, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah great. Really enjoyed it. It was, it was wonderful for us because we, we, we met many people and and uh, it helped our careers, all of us. And, and, you know, it's something you never forget. Your first tour, one was, at the time, the Asian Space Tour was the biggest tour. The yeah. biggest tour, certainly in the UK. I don't know about anywhere else, but so you couldn't get a better tour. For a young guy, yeah. young guys, you couldn't get a better, better tour. It was, it was brilliant. Um, why after a reunion in 2005, you split up another time in 2008? Well, we, we didn't really kind of um, make a reunion and we didn't really split up. What happened was we were all playing in different bands and then we were asked by a record company to release um, all the music from 1980 on an album. That's why people think it's a compilation. Um, when if they, they, they contacted us and said, what, what material do you have? Yeah. What songs do you have from that time? And we said, well, we had a whole album plus demos. So we gave those to the record companies and they remixed, remastered, and put it out in 2003. It was Zoom Club, wasn't it? Zoom Club. And, um, and then what happened was, from there, um, people saw we were, thought we were back yeah. playing, and, um, but we weren't. We had, uh, Bruce was playing with The Sweet, Danny was playing with Paddy Goes to Hollyhead, I was playing State Trooper, just reformed, and I was playing in another band. And Baz, the bass player, was unwell. He was, uh, he's not very well. He's got a, yeah. a problem with his, um, with his, with his eyesight. Anyway, uh, off, fundamentally, we were offered some gigs in Germany, a gig in Germany in the, in the festival. So we went and played together for the first time in 20, 25 years nearly. It was the 25th and, uh, anniversary. It was the 25th anniversary, yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> and we, you know, we, 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 we realized we really enjoyed playing together again. But we didn't have the time to, to make a new album or do anything because we were doing other things. Um, so we didn't really decide to actually make another album for another about four or five years. And then we and then we, we started to work on Rising for the Ashes. Yeah. Finally in 2011, Weapon came back with the support of the fans. With what, sorry? With the support of the fans. Support. Support. Oh, oh yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Support. It's, 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 it's my English. <laughs> <laughs> well, which are your influences? Well, mine personally? Yeah. Um, uh, many, 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 in, in different forms of music. In hard rock, for me, the greatest band of all time is Deep Purple. Um, because musically, they were so advanced, so ahead of their time, so dynamic. Um, at the time, they were kind of like, you know, these young guys just exploded on the world. So when I was uh, you know, younger than you, and I, and I heard Deep Purple in rock, that was it. I knew what I wanted to do. So in hard rock, they were the biggest influences. But many other forms of music outside of that, you know, great songwriters, great singers, great guitar players in different forms of music. But in hard rock, Deep Purple, number one, and then maybe maybe Led Zeppelin, and then um, Queen, then Lizzie, um, Uriah Heep, um, and some American bands as well, Grand Funk Railroad, you may not know them, but they were, they were, they were, they were, they were you know them? They were, they were, they were a great band. And, and, um, yeah, so within, that, within, the, within the realms of hard rock, and of course, you know, the Beatles, you know, I mean, they, they were a big influence as well. Was it anything to take to an Sorry, say again, Nathan. Which three cities would you take? Oh, on the Desert Island scene. All right, yeah. okay, whoa, well, 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 yeah, okay. Three Ds on the Desert Island. Rising from the ashes. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> You're lying, God. <laughs> yeah. The dogs are his greatest hits. Actually, you should ask his boys some questions in a minute. I'll just make um, the, the, um, Mainly Japan, Deep Purple. Yeah. Mainly Japan. One. Yeah. 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 <coughs> um, what else? Like the third one. What else? Okay, we talked about this earlier. Yeah. I think it would probably be, and I listen to this a lot, and you're probably going to be surprised, it'd be Frank Sinatra, Frank Sinatra live at the Sands in Los Angeles. And uh, Frank Sinatra and Hoagie Carmichael on piano. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the music is, you know, the vocals, the music is just. Amazing. If, if you're a musician, you can really love it. You know? yeah. Yeah. Sure. It's not rock, but it's just beautiful music. Yeah. Yeah. My way. <laughs> yeah, my way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Tony, you did it your way, and I did it my way. <laughs> Which is your favorite word and sort of weapon in a whole oh, career? Well, I, mean, yeah. I, it, I think it's got to be set the stage alight because that is was the important one for, for 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 us as a band and for me as a person, and you know it, it's had the most impact of um, the song. So. It's difficult to say because the songs are like they're like children. You know? What's your favourite child? You know? yeah. uh, but I would say probably set the stage around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. But actually, you might be better off asking these these guys. What's your favourite weapon track? Don't like, don't like any of them. You don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> Dry heat, deep purple, <laughs> no to head, quo. Burning skies, probably. Burning skies. I think. Um, I like celebration time. Yeah. You like celebration yeah. time? Yeah. Well, wow. yeah. Super. Yeah, that's great. great. Right. It's a toss up between that yeah. and ready for you. Yeah, yeah. Right, Mariah yeah. and Alabama. Okay, cool. Thank you very much, Ed. Thank you. It's been wonderful to meet you. Yeah. yeah. And Thank you, my well, friend. You finish the interview how you want to our. Yeah, yeah. So just to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're Weapon UK. My name's Jeff Summers. This is on vocals. Marilyn Monroe's big brother, Danny Hines. <laughs> He's a wrong one. <laughs> oh. uh, Darren, Darren Lee, I play drums. Yeah. And this is, P this is PJ, PJ Phillips. <laughs> no relation to Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> <laughs> no relation to Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> and, um, and we're here in, uh, in Barcelona. Uh, it's, it's muy bueno. And uh, yeah. to play Massa Rock 2. <laughs> And um, I'd like to say thank you to uh, our Spanish friends for, for, for bringing us here and uh, we're going to have some, lots of fun and thank, thank you to our, our Spanish fans for buying the record and uh, we hope you enjoy the show. Rock and roll! Rock and roll. <laughs>